Hey everyone, this is Dave, and today I'm going to be painting a Valentine's Day rustic reverse canvas diptych. Say that ten times fast. <laughs> So today I'm going to be using two canvases. They're both the same size. I have a cutting mat here, cutting utensil, a pencil. I have an old novel. You can use old newspaper or magazines as well if you have that around. Paint brushes, different sizes here. I have a glue gun and I also have Elmer's glue that I'm going to use. Acrylic paints. And have some water in a container handy and ready to go for cleanups there's some twine i'm gonna use just left over and then i have these leftover wooden hearts i'm gonna use as well so there you go that's everything i'm gonna use today here is just a sample a couple samples of the reverse canvas that i've done in the past um all you do really is you have the wooden frame and it's brought to the front, you take the canvas off. So these two, one of them is a canvas and one of them is actually a mock-up of a project that I did for a wreath. Here is our canvas, it is stapled all the way around a wooden frame. One side is blank and the other side there's a little bit of a coating on it. So you may kind of think to yourself, well, why don't you just flip it over and use that? So the reason is, is because there is that coating on top of it the other side is not treated so if you're going to paint on it it's best to use the side that's coated so let's get into it i'm going to take my book and there's my canvases right there and what i'm going to do is very simple <laughs> i'm just going to take out the pages and rip them out and start a little stockpile for my canvases now, what I'm gonna do with those pages is pretty much just kind of paper mache them onto the canvas. So the background is going to be all text, all lettering. So I'm not gonna be painting the whole background. So all I'm doing is I'm ripping out a whole bunch of pages and you'll see that there's obviously straight edges and I don't really want that. So I'm just gonna go around and square it all off just by kind of really quickly just ripping the pages such that I have or I get rid of I should say those straight edges I want them nice and torn that's the look that I'm going for so I'm just gonna rip them all up here and make sure I get rid of all of those edges and then I'm gonna start attaching them to my canvas so I have my paintbrush I have a whole bunch of Elmer's glue this is just white Elmer's glue that I'm throwing in a little glass dish and I'm gonna create like a paste almost like a Mod Podge really so I'm just gonna make a homemade paste here with some glue and just a little bit of water you don't have to put a lot of water in there I want it to be a little bit runnier than what it is so I'm just mixing it all up here getting it all ready mix 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 <laughs> <laughs> the consistency I'm looking for is a little bit runnier than pancake batter, I guess you will. I'm trying to show you here, I'm not seeing it pick up on the camera, but it is, there you go, it is a little bit runnier than like a pancake mix. And then all I'm going to do is put a generous amount down and spread that out where I want the paper to attach to the canvas. So again, you do the same process when you do Mod Podge. You put one layer down, you put your paper on top, and then you create another layer using your Mod Podge. So this is kind of the same thing here. So once I put one layer down, I have my piece of paper on there, and then I take a little bit more, and I just throw it on top. And then I'm just going to continue that whole method over the entire canvas, making sure I cover the entire canvas. And the reason why I'm doing the overlap is because I'm actually going to cut all that off later, you'll see. There is a method to my madness. <laughs> I'm not going to leave it just like that. <laughs> and there you go. I'm just using extra pieces here. I'm using all that recycled paper, which is awesome. And I'm just attaching everything on there using the same procedure and the same method. And once I get that all done for the first canvas, 
I put that aside. I'm going to grab my other canvas and I'm going to start working on that and do the exact same thing. So I'm ripping off all the sides there, getting that nice rustic edge. And here they are. They are all done and they're soaking wet. <laughs> now I'm just showing you here, there are bumps and ripples. That's totally okay for the look that I'm going for. So especially when you wet paper, obviously it's going to crinkle a little bit, but I'm totally happy with that. I kind of wanted that to happen. So I'm just going to let both of those dry really quickly. Or I shouldn't say quickly. I just want to let those dry. So I'm going to toss them aside and then I'm going to start with that wooden heart that I have. So I laid down just a piece of old paper that I'm going to use as a protective surface and a palette as well. <laughs> and I've got my little wooden heart. And all I'm going to do for this is I'm going to paint it red. Nice and simple, nice and easy. But with this as well, I'm going to cover it all first. Make sure that's a good coat on there with the sides and the front of it. And then you'll see me later on. I'm actually going to antique it. So first I'm going to coat it with that red color. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of my brown paint as well. So this is just acrylic paint that I'm using here. Shake it up and give me a little dab there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start kind of a dry brush technique. And I still have some of that red on the paintbrush, which is totally fine. And then I'm just going to start adding it with a very light dry brush effect. And I just kind of go in and out with that color. I don't put too much on my paintbrush because I can always add. It's just very hard to take away. <laughs> so I always start with a little bit and then I add on top of that. And I want to add a little bit of white as well. So here I am pouring just a little dollop of white. I'm going to use the exact same brush and the exact same technique of just lightly brushing it across that heart until I get the effect and the look that I'm looking for. And once that's all done and I'm happy with the effect, I just put it down and I'm just going to let that dry. So here's the paper dried. So you can see it's still on the canvas there. And what I'm going to do for this and what I wanted to do was have a little aging effect on it. So the whiteness of it was just a little bit too white for my liking. I wanted it a little bit darker, a little bit aged. So all I'm doing is the trusted old technique of a tea bag in water. So that's it. <laughs> so all I'm doing is I'm taking that tea bag that's been soaking in water and I'm running it across the top. And here you see, I'm just kind of seeing how it looks together with that heart and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to just put that one aside, grab my other canvas and do the exact same thing with this one here as well. So I'm just taking my tea bag and I'm just dragging it across the surface and adding a little bit of discoloration to my painting, giving it that beautiful antique look. And of course, right around the edges where there's ripped, I really want to put that uh, color in there as well to make that pop. So again, I'm just going to let that dry for a little bit longer. And here you go. It's all dry. Now I'm going to take off my staples that go all the way along the wooden canvas. So I have this little tool kit and I'm just going to take this very small flathead screwdriver and I'm going to pry out those staples. Now with this, be careful. <laughs> If the placement of your hand is wrong, you can jab yourself. And trust me, I have done it a couple times in the past. So a little word of warning, it hurts when it happens. <laughs> so just be careful when you're using your tools on this. Of course, some of the staples don't come completely out for me. And you'll see me use uh, my pliers every now and then. Here you go. Just to help take the rest of those staples out. Now I didn't just cut them, I actually took them all the way out. So along with my flathead screwdriver and my pliers, I was able to get all of those staples out. And then once that happens, the magic begins. 
So here it is. I take it out. There's your wooden frame. There's your canvas that we were just working on. And of course, it's a beautiful natural color piece of wood and you can totally leave it like that if you want. Or you can do what I do just to darken it up a little bit. I just take my acrylic paint and I just pour it right on top there. No mixing, no fuss, no muss. And then I take my damp rag and then I'm just going to move really quickly because <laughs> acrylic paints do dry very quickly. So I'm just going to move really quickly and get all those edges antiqued and get a little bit of that brown all over every single edge. Of course, I don't worry about the back portion of it because that's going to be covered by the canvas and nobody's really going to see it. So again, I just put dollops of paint on my rag here and then I just move it all around with the rag quickly, quickly, making sure that I get good coverage and the coverage that I want. Let's test all everything out again. That looks great together. And so does the heart. That looks good. I'm happy with that. So I must say I got a little bit excited and I jumped a step without recording. So I apologize. What I've done is I have cut out my canvases to the size of the frames and glued them to the back. I did that for one of them and I didn't record the cutting process. So I apologize for that. So all I'm doing here is I am kind of planning everything. So I thought it'd be a good idea for me to show you how I kind of plan. I had an image in my head of what I wanted to do with this, and now I'm actually going to plan it out to see what I want to do. On one of the canvases, I wanted cursive writing of the word love, and I wanted to tie the two canvases together. So on the one on the left, I'm actually going to do like a couple of loops, and then have it join up to the one at the right. Now, if you haven't done paintings before, or, you know, here's a little bit of Artist 101, I guess. A diptych is actually two paintings that are put together that becomes one painting. So it's one painting that has two canvases or two panels. Now for a triptych, say that 10 times fast, that will be three panels or three canvases put together to make one painting. So I wanted to tie these two canvases together and I'm just going through my whole thought process here of how I wanted to do that. So I'm incorporating the twine in both the left and the right canvas. And once I figure out what I'm doing, I'm going to outline the little swirl with my glue gun and then I'm going to put my twine down on that little swirl. And I'm going to use my little tool here. I don't know what this is called, and I can't take credit for this idea. But a friend of mine, Susie, I saw her do this and I asked her about it. This is like a little makeup application brush, I guess you would call it. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it. All I did was she told me to go to the Dollar Tree and pick this up. It's in the makeup section and she used it for and she still uses it for the exact same reason that i'm using it to you know attach anything down um geez my tongue is tied <laughs> to basically help you place your items down without burning your fingers when you're using the hot glue does that make sense <laughs> oh i'm laughing at myself so all i'm using is this wonderful tool to press the twine onto the hot glue. And there you go, there's my idea coming to life and I'm very excited about it. So I just let that dry for a little bit and then I cut the excess off and there you go. There's my first canvas done. Here's the second one. And this is the one where I wanted the cursive writing of love. So I'm matching up the level where the, um, the twine meets. So it looks like it's going across two canvases. So again, I'm just outlining it with my glue gun, placing the twine down, and then I'm gonna start my cursive writing with the L that begins with the word love. <laughs> and again, I just do a little bit at a time because we all know how fast the glue gun does dry, the glue from the glue gun does dry, 
And there I just kind of wrote down with using a pencil, the word love, just to kind of give me a little guide. And then I just keep continuing using my glue gun, little bits at a time, and it eventually all falls into place. And as I get closer and closer to the end, I get more and more excited because it's actually working. <laughs> I'm like, the idea I had is working. This is awesome. So it's all coming together now. And there you go. You can kind of see how the two come together. So I'm just going to trim off those edges. Then I'm going to take that board, the frame, put it good side down, throw some glue on the back. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that canvas over so good side is down and place it on the canvas, hold it in, get that nice and secured. And then I thought, you know what? The second one needs something. So I had these little hearts handy. So I'm going to grab one of these little hearts and they have little stickers on the back as well. But I'm going to grab my glue gun and make sure that stays in place and whammo. I am in love. <laughs> so what I did was I actually painted the second heart the same process or the same method I did the first one. Because I looked at it and I thought, ah, it doesn't really stand out, so I really want it to stand out. But here we go. I have my love all in twine and my reverse canvas Valentine's Day dip titch painting all completed. And the beauty part of this is you have two paintings. You can use this one or this one alone or put them together. How about that, eh? Three paintings in one. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching me today. I hope you liked what I created and I hope maybe you'll give it a try too. If you did like it, please hit that like button and don't forget, leave me a comment down below and subscribe to my channel because there's always fun and exciting videos coming to you every Thursday at 5 o'clock. Thanks again. Bye for now.